Hello everybody, welcome back to New Zealand Mysteries, you're with TJ. Today we are going into our stories from around the world and we are looking at the tragic case of Corey McKee, a young guy over in the UK that went out on a night out and did not return. Quickly, a couple of things before we get into the story. I love seeing all my returning subscribers, thank you so much every one of you means so much to me if you're just passing through awesome thank you so much for giving me a chance i like to just give the facts instead of doing makeup and stories and other things so i hope you stick around uh i want to say thank you to Catherine s and someone anom anonymous because they went to, to buymeacoffee.com forward slash nz mysteries and were nice enough to shout me a coffee and that really means a lot to me as I get closer to 1,000 subscribers, which um, is a great milestone and I'm getting really excited about it, it's not going to mean that my channel is going to be monetized because I speak about a lot of things and say a lot of words that YouTube doesn't like for monetization. But the thing is, I don't want to have to hide the words or play around with them I want to tell you the details and I want to tell you facts and I have to use horrible words sometimes that they don't like so yeah I appreciate everyone that does that everything is in the description box below um, there is also PayPal and uh, any way of getting in touch with me if you want to suggest cases as well so let's get into it for the first um, story I'm going to read, it's from bbc.com and it's actually got everything we need to know. Uh, written by Kate Scotter and it was 2016, Corey McKeague and his mysterious disappearance. Now this photograph is part of a CCTV footage and I'll show you that shortly. Uh, the last footage of this guy. Seconds after the this CCTV picture was taken. Airman Corey McKeague turned to the right and disappeared into the shadows. Who is he and how did he vanish without a trace? Tucking into takeaway food on a mild autumn night, Mr McKeague appeared to be in good spirits. He had just played a game of paper, scissors, stone with a stranger. It was 3.25 in the morning on Saturday 24th of September and he had been on a drunken night out with friends in the Suffolk town of Bury St Edmunds. No one has seen or heard from him since. And we're going to find out who is Corey McKeague but let's quickly just look at the United Kingdom here and if you're not um, familiar with it like me then Suffolk County is down here. Let's get back to this. So Corey was born in Perth and brought up in Cooper, Fife, with his two brothers, Derek and McCain. Their parents separated when Corey was nine and the boys moved 28 miles away, which is 45 k's for us here in New Zealand, away to Dunfermline with their mother, Nicola. At Sil St Columbus High School in the town, Mr McKeague had longed to become a Royal Marine, but he initially went on to train to become a hairdresser at Adam Smith College in Kirkcaldy. After realising hairdressing was not the career for him though, he departed for Perth College University of the Highlands and Islands to become a fitness trainer. It was then he decided to join the Royal Air Force and was posted to RAF Honington in October 2013. He spent three months training before passing out, something his grandmother Mary described as his family's proudest day. Corey is a gunner in the number two squadron RAF regiment. He is described as 5 foot 10 inches, the white man, which is uh, for us Kiwi, Kiwis 178 centimetres tall of medium build with short light brown hair. His mother has described him as gregarious, funny and someone who loved to be the centre of attention. You don't forget Corey if you meet him once, she said. At the time, Corey had a crossbreed puppy named Lowell, which his family said he loved to bits and he had made plans to visit his grandparents at Halloween. So he sounds like an all-around good guy, really. 
What do we know about the night that he vanished? So Corey had intended to head into Bury St Edmunds on the 23rd of September with a group of mates from the airbase, but due to a misunderstanding he had been left behind. Instead, he drove himself into the town about 9 miles or 15k from the base. He parked his BMW on Robert Bobby Way just after 10 o'clock and spent an hour on the phone to his brother Derek making plans for the following weekend. Corey then went to join his friends. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the group went to the Soba on Langton Place where they joined in a song with musician Nick Lowe. The singer said Mr McKeague was quite a regular in all of the bars. It's said that Corey and his mates then headed over to the Weatherspoon Corn Exchange pub at about half past 11. Megan Manning, who was there on the night, said he was coming up to loads of different tables saying hello to everyone. He was chatty. He was a nice boy. She said he was memorable because of the outfit he was wearing that night. He was wearing a light pink Ralph Lauren shirt, well, very nice, white jeans and a pair of Timberland suede boots. Mr McKeague and his friends left the Corn Exchange at about 12.30 and went to Flex Nightclub on St Andrews Street, just a minute's walk away. The manager, Ben Manning, said he had asked Corey if he was drunk, to which he said yes and told him I love you and gave him a hug before stumbling outside. So doing the I love yous and the hugs is definitely a sign that someone's drunk. Um, so you can see with all of these sort of bars are all in the one area, um, not too far apart from each other. Just after 1am, Corey was escorted out of Flex by doorman Will Hook. Mr Hook said the serviceman had consumed enough alcohol to draw attention to himself and amicably agreed to leave. It was then that he became separated from his mates. He bought burgers, a kebab and a bag of chips from his regular plates. So he was probably quite hungry. Pizza Mamma Mia on St Andrew Street North where he seemed happy and played rock paper scissors with a stranger. He could be seen eating his food as he passed a CCTV camera opposite the Grapes Pub on the corner of Brent Grovel Street and St Andrew Street about 1.20 in the morning. Let's have a quick look at that CCTV. So this is the um, CCTV footage and you'll see him come into frame in a minute. Unfortunately it's not very long and it is the final moments uh, that he is sort of seen alive. The streets look pretty empty and he looks like he's all by himself. There doesn't seem to be anyone following him or anything. So Corey could be seen eating his food as he passed a CCTV camera opposite the Grapes Pub on the corner of Brent Grovel Street and St Andrew Street at about 1.20 in the morning. Now if I just show you um, a quick map here, it's really hard for me actually to find the, you know, all the places that these guys are talking about in trying to find out um, which route he took and all that stuff so this is the grapes I man managed to find that but all the other places that they mentioned I have just had so much trouble so um, it may have to be something if you're interested in the case to go and, and have a look further especially if you're better at me in uh, doing maps and looking at maps because apparently it's not my best feature as we've just seen Okay, Corey took a nap for about two hours in the doorway of electrical store Hughes on the corner of Brent Govel Street and St John Street. At 3.08, he forwarded a photo of a previous night out to a friend from his phone. He then turned right into a loading bay area known as the Horseshoe behind Greg's at 3.25. The area is closed off by buildings and the rooftops have been searched and analysed by police. police. It has been proven that an individual cannot leave the area on foot without being seen on CCTV but Corey was not caught on camera again. So let me show you this um, horseshoe that they're talking about. 
and I've got a couple of sort of maps here um, but yeah so this is the sort of <laughs> this here is the horseshoe and you can see all these bins and stuff in here and the idea is that the CTV covers out here but it doesn't cover in here um, and the only way to get out of this horseshoe if you don't go right here you know where the cameras pick you up is to go in the back door of a business and go out the front or jump on the roof of these premises and you know jump over the front or something like that so definitely um, odd very very odd here's another um, a map for you to have a look at this obviously is the horseshoe and the cameras cover down here uh, and Corey was last seen on camera going into the horseshoe and then of course he was never seen coming out again so what happened what has happened since RAF Huntington reported that Corey's disappearance to police on Monday on the 26th of September when he did not turn up to parade at 1130 the base would ordinarily report a serviceman AWOL, but Miss Urquhart said he was treated as a missing person straight away, and that's his mum. And I'm going to butcher her name, and I just I'm so sorry about that. She said this was partly because of heightened security after the attempted abduction of a serviceman close to RAF Marum in Norfolk in July, and also because McKeague's disappearance was so out of character. Police first informed the media of his disappearance on Tuesday 27th of September and released the CCTV footage of him in Brink Grovel Street the next day. Here's what has happened since. On the 4th of October, it was revealed that his mobile phone had been tracked moving 12 miles, which is 19 kilometres, away to Barton Mills hours after he was last seen. So let's take a quick look at that. On the 8th of December, a crowdfunding campaign to hire a private investigator to search for Corey raises 20 grand within two days and police release CCTV footage of 10 people they want to speak to. 7th of December, Mr McKeague's mum, Miss Urquhart, offers a £50,000 reward made possible by an anonymous local business couple. That's really nice. 9th of December, his mum says she has lost faith in police over the search for her son. On the 16th of December, outgoing RAF Honington Commander GP Captain Mick Smith speaks of Corey's friends, hopes that they say and hope he will be found. 17th of December, a search organised by his mum takes place at an area of forest near RAF Honington. 20th of December, Corey's uncle Tony Ring expresses anger over a seemingly, seemingly bogus fundraising website set up in his nephew's name. I just, I can't understand why people do this shit and hurt families of loved ones that have gone missing and give them false hope and, and just rip them off or scam them, you know. Surely they're going through enough shit at the moment with their loved one gone without people doing that i just can't believe there's horrible people like that more than six thousand hours have been spent searching for corey and thousands of frames of cctv footage trawled through the find corey facebook page quickly gained more than eighty thousand followers and there has been a huge campaign on twitter to locate him so what are the theories about what happened when Corey was first reported missing, it was thought he may have attempted to walk back to RAF Honington. But that's weird because we didn't see him walk out of the horseshoe, did we? Uh, one theory was that he was hit by a car and was dead in a ditch somewhere en route. A stretch of the A14 between the Morton Hall and Roham Junctions was closed off while police in Suffolk Lowland Search and Rescue carried out extensive searches. British Transport Police has also helped Suffolk Police with searches along the railway line from Bury St Edmunds and a section of the A1101 between the Five Ways Roundabout at Martin, Bar 
at Barton Mills and Icklingham was closed while officers conducted further searches along it. Searches have also been carried out along the A11. Another theory is that he was in one of the bins at the Horseshoe area which was then taken to a landfall site and unfortunately this is the theory that I believe. Signals showed his Microsoft Lumia 435 mobile phone had moved to nearby Barton Mills where there is a landfill site and police searched a bin lorry after finding its route matched the movements of the device. However, it was found that the weight of the bin lorry's load was 15 kilos, which was 33 pounds, too light to have contained Mr. McKeeb. It, as a result, the lorry was released and the landfill site was not searched. The phone, however, has still not been found. Now, we're going to have a few updates, um, I think. Could Corey have been harmed by someone? Third party involvement was quickly ruled out by police, but the idea has not been dismissed by his mum. His mum said for her son to have vanished from the Horseshoe area, he must have been taken by someone else in a vehicle, which is another way he could have got out of there, of course, and not have been seen. Uh, Suffolk Police has since said offers, officers continued to consider every possibility. There has been some speculation of kidnap after the attempted abduction of an airman from the A. RAF Murram in Norfolk in July, but this has not been substantiated by police. His mum uh, and family have categorically said they do not believe he went AWOL. Although she has declined to elaborate further, she has been critical of the police investigation, saying police had utterly destroyed her confidence that they would find her son. She organised her own search on 17th of December. Do you know, I really wish there was going to be one or two stories where the police are really helpful and they do really good jobs because it seems like most stories um the police do shit really suffolk police has maintained officers are using an inordinate amount of resources and are exploring every possibility the force said it was treating the case as a missing person investigation not a murder investigation Nevertheless, police have said the level of resources deployed is similar to that of a murder investigation with extensive searches by police dogs and forensic officers. More than £26,000 has gone towards the investigation so far, according to figures from a Freedom of Information request. Yet three months on, Corey's whereabouts are a bigger mystery as they night he disappeared. So... A wee bit of information there um, going over the story and you know some of you will be having a theory coming up in your mind I guess what you think is what happened or what mostly happened so I'd like you to share those down below but um, we've got a little bit more information we're at the sun.co.uk and this was a story by Amanda Devlin, John Lockett and Guy Birchall on the 3rd of September 2020 what happened to Corey McKeague and when did he go missing in Bury St Edmunds? That's a really weird name. When I have to say it, it's just really weird. The fate of missing RAF airman Corey McKeague remains a mystery nearly four years since his disappearance from Bury St Edmunds in September 2016. Now his family fears the human remains recently discovered in the river in Suffolk could be his. Here's everything we know about the serviceman's disappearance and the search for him. And I know that those bones were not his, unfortunately. So I try not to um, double up on too much information. So we know he was posted at ARF Honington, 10 miles north of, of where he was. Uh, a senior aircraftman was the son of Nicola from Dunfermline and Martin McKee from Kuka, and he has the two brothers, Derek and McCain. Police appealing for information described him as white, 5 foot 10, of medium build with short, light brown hair. Corey met his girlfriend, April Oliver, five months before his disappearance. And in January 2017, four months after he vanished, she announced she was pregnant. The saddest thing that is just so damn sad. Sad in one way, in another way, they've got something of Corey's you know, a baby made by Corey. Um, so they've got a part of him. 
but still really, really tragic. The baby girl was born on Father's Day, June the 18th, 2017. The 21 year old who gave birth to baby Ali Louise named her baby's middle name after the missing RAF airman. The gunner, then 23, went missing on September 24, 2016, after a night out. He drove to town for a night out wearing his pink Ralph Lauren shirt, white trousers and brown Timberland boots. He separated from his friends and CCTV footage showing him eating takeaway food at around 1.20am. At 3.24am he was spotted taking a nap in a nearby doorway before leaving the view of the camera. This was the last confirmed sighting of Corey. Data from Corey's phone showed it moved between Berry and Barton Hill, Mar- Martin Bills, Bill Barton Mills. Okay, let's try it again. Data from Corey's phone showed it moved between Berry and Barton Mills on the morning of his disappearance. This is on the route of the lorry that collected rubbish from the bins where Corey was last seen. Detectives believe he could have been crushed by a bin lorry after falling asleep in one. Cops revealed that apparently Corey was known to sleep in bins when he went out and got drunk. But a crucial blunder meant the weight of rubbish on board was wrongly recorded. There are various theories about what may have happened to the RAF serviceman. Corey may have attempted to walk home and managed to dodge the cameras. Another option is that he willingly got into a, to a car with someone else close to the area or that he was taken against his will. Police say analysis of a mobile phone data revealed his phone travelled between the market town of Bury St Edmunds and Barton Mills more than 13 miles away. Timings of a nearby bin lorry match up with the phone's movement so the truck was seized. Detectives initially thought the low weighed less than 15 kilos, meaning officers did not believe Corey was in the lorry. But later it emerged that it was incorrect and the actual weight was 90 kilograms, 14 stone, heavier, which Corey's mum said can only mean one thing. In March 2018, Corey's dad Martin said he believed his son may have killed himself, which is a whole new, another theory and we don't see this backed up anywhere else. Um, He claimed his son knew his girlfriend was pregnant before he disappeared and it would have had a profound effect on him. Uh, Mum Nicola believes evidence in the inquiry was manipulated. Appearing on BBC's Victoria Derbyshire show, she said there was inconsistency over evidence in the missing persons inquiry. She and her sons also said comments made by his dad over how Corey may have come to be in the bin were atrocious and appalling so obviously a big family raft there unfortunately she added that data such as the weight of the bin load taken to landfall after he disappeared had either been manipulated or someone is lying in july 2018 nearly two years since Corey's disappearance dad martin said his son's body was somewhere in the suffolk waste disposal system and would never be recovered Mum Nicola also renewed her criticism of the police for that she says is their failure to search key areas. The investigation into Mr McKeague's disappearance was passed to cold case detectives in 2018. Suffolk Police said the most likely scenario is that Corey went into a bin which was emptied into a lorry and ended up in the waste process. No trace of him has ever been found. Very, very sad. Very sad. Where did police search for Corey? In February 2017, cops began to search a landfill site where a waste collection was delivered on the morning Corey disappeared. The expected six to ten week search ended up taking far longer, but police confirmed they had not found anything at the site. A 26 year old man was later arrested on suspicion of attempting to pervert the course of justice. But cops said the man arrested would face no further action as it emerged the weight of a bin picked up on the night Corey went missing was recorded incorrectly, suggesting his body could have been in it. Police initially said they were confident of finding Corey's body at the site and his mum said it was just a matter of time. But after a mammoth 20 week investigation, cops finally stopped searching the rubbish for clues. 
sparking emotional scenes as Corey's dad blockaded the tip's entrance. And you can understand how um, their parents must feel, you know, everyone's giving up on finding their son. But this was a long time they were searching in the rubbish and they can't keep searching forever and 20 weeks is pretty long um, and it's not a nice job for for the guys doing it his family spoke of the heartache over his disappearance with his dad sharing new pictures of his son as a young boy on several occasions they also had her at vultures flogging a range of clothes and mugs emblazoned with missing Corey's face on 27th of August 2020, human remains in the River Star in Sudbury, Suffolk were discovered. Some police said that a post-mortem examination of the bones found could not able to establish any form of identification or cause of death. Coy's dad said farewell to the missing 23-year-old ARAF gunner at a special memorial service held on November the 10th, 2018. His dad organised the emotional church tribute after accepting his beloved son, last seen over two years ago, was dead. The dad of three brushed away tears as he hailed Corey, who vanished on a night out in Suffolk, as carefree and energetic. He was joined by his wife Tricia and around 20, 20, 200 family friends and RAF officials. So that was really nice. Um... I'm going to have links to these in the description box below if you guys want to go and do any more digging and try and find out the map side of things um, you can go and do that just one more quick thing uh, 13th of November 2020 this came out and it's the coroner's inquest very short here Corey 23 who was based at RAF Honington Suffolk is believed to believed to have died on the 24th of September 2016 after a night out in Berry Street or Berry St Edmunds. Despite extensive searches, his body has never been found. The inquest was opened at Suffolk Coroner's Court and was adjourned for a pre-inquest review in February. Something Superintendent Marina Erickson from Suffolk Police said Mr McKeek had been on a night out in Bury St Edmunds and was very drunk when he was asked to leave the Flex nightclub. She said he from Dunfermline Fife was happy and friendly throughout the night and was last seen at 3.25am walking into a horseshoe shaped area behind Greggs and Super Drug where industrial raised bins were stored. Uh, a Biffa refuse lorry drove into the area less than an hour after the last sighting of Corey. The lorry's load, lorry's bin truck, its load weighed 116 kilos, which is 70 to 80 kilo, kilograms more than average, she told a hearing. The Emmett mobile phone mapped the same route in the bin lorry to Martin Barton Mills. The superintendent Erickson said it was believed he had climbed into the Greggs waste bin and was inside when it was emptied into the Biffa lorry and that was where he subsequently died. The chief coroner for England and Wales directed the inquest to be held into the death. Um, his mum previously said she hoped the inquest would be able to tell me and us as a family that there is just nothing else that we could or should have done or able to do to find Corey. Uh, at the time, the force said the evidence pointed to Corey having been transported from the horseshoe area in a bin truck and ultimately taken to the Milton landfill site. As part of the inquiry, which cost more than £2 million, police trawled the landfill site in Cambridgeshire. Wow. So... I don't know theories I, I forgot to sort of think about that he could have um, got into a car and got out of there that's that, that but he was drunk and surely the cops if they had seen a car because they would have been really looking at CCTV if they'd seen a car they would have mentioned that and they didn't so I'm not going to go with that I'm not going to go with that he somehow made it out walking and he was heading somewhere and then something happened unfortunately 
the most horrible thing. I believe that he went to sleep in one of those bins. Unfortunately, an hour later, it picked him up and he got taken to that landfill and he'll never be found, unfortunately. That's what I think anyway. Let me know what you guys think below. Uh, it's a bit of a long one. I'm going to go and have a coffee. Um, see you next time. Bye, guys.